So I'm super, super excited to have on the Jollof Agenda here with me, our mega superstar, Rita Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Rita, for joining us on Radio Now 95.3. Thanks, thanks for having me. Okay. Today. I mean, I must tell our listeners something. Um, she is even more stunning in person. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> the skin is flawless. <laughs> and, you know, the smile. Uh -huh. And I just, I am a big fan. Um, I don't do um, groupie easily, but yeah. with you, actually, I'm a Aww, bit of a groupie. Thank so, you so <laughs> yeah, much. Thank I'm, you. I'm a big fan. And thank obviously, you. sort of followed you all through your career. You produced La Femme Angela yeah. in addition to starring in it as well, of Absolutely. course. Um, tell me, what was the thinking behind it? Did you get a script and decide, oh, this is a great story that I want to be a part of? Or how did it come about that so, you decided to act and produce this yeah. or co-produce yeah. this? Yeah. Okay, so um, Tunde Babalola wrote our first film, The Meeting. And um, uh, when he approached Mildred Okwa, who's my business partner, we both own the Audrey Silver Company, and said to her, I have this script. He sent it to her. She read it. She sent, she told me about it. She sent it to me. I read it. And we just knew that we would have to shoot this film. We both connected with La Femme Angela on a very deep level. Mm. So we knew how to acquire this script from Tunde Babalola. What, what was it about the movie that touched you or the story? Yeah, it was just everything. Okay, first of all, it's a genre that hasn't really been done in Nigeria. So we felt, okay, why not try and tell a story in this genre, but um, pay tribute to Africa, to Nigeria, which is what we did. So it is New Noah, inspired by Nigeria, inspired by Africa, you know. So um, we acquired the script. However, we knew that the budget to shoot this film, to, you know, do justice to the story will be enormous. Mm. <laughs> and we didn't have it. Right. So what did we do? We kept it aside for four years. Oh, wow. So yes. you got the story and it wasn't done for four years. Yes, we didn't shoot it for four years. We, uh, we How are you able to convince him to patiently wait and not oh, to try no. and, you know, take S it somewhere else? No, no, we paid for it. Okay. So we so acquired you bought it. it. Yes, right. we acquired it mm. and just kept it. We decided to pay for it and just, you know, kept the script until we found the right budget because we decided that, look, La Femme Angela is a film that needs to be shot the way it needs to be shot. If you start to, you know, cut corners and everything, you, you'll be doing, a, you will not be doing it justice. You'll not be doing a disservice to the story. So we just kept it for four years. And finally, we found, you know, investors who were willing to come on board and that's how we started filming La Femme Angela. And, and, and I mean once we finish talking about yeah. the, the, the film itself I think we'll come back to and have a little conversation regarding financing and Nollywood yeah. um, but just to talk to the content of the film itself often people underestimate the importance of silence when you're telling stories and certainly in Nigerian films we've seen a lot of busyness and a lot of activities mm -hmm. so th there's a there's a love scene mm -hmm. uh, between Dejare and Angela where silence was used effectively mm -hmm. how as a producer and also an actress do you use these sort of things to sort of um, for the pace of your move so um, when it comes to this genre type um, it is mostly you use a lot of emotions expressions, silence to move the story along. Now, for me, for some reason, I like the expressive, uh, well, yeah, we use facial expressions more because I think that that is actually more difficult to do when creating, uh, when creating a role or interpreting a role. Um, expressing how you feel just through facial expressions is one of the most difficult things you can do mm -hmm. because it's easier when you speak you know when you speak you can actually uh, um, convince people with the words you're saying however imagine saying a line without actually saying those words but you're saying it with your face you know and you have to say it convincingly so I actually like that type that's of thing that's good acting yes, isn't it you know, that's yeah. where you separate the yeah, exactly. girls from the yeah. women or the boys <laughs> from the men <laughs> so I, I like that type of thing and mm. La Femme Angela required more, more of that what, what sort of preparation do you do mm. when you sort of are preparing to tackle a role are yeah. you 
one of those method actors? Do you sort of immerse yourself in specific places and times in order to sort of get a sense of the character? Or how do you prepare? I don't like addressing myself as a method actor. People call me that, but I don't like that because I've not... I feel before you call yourself a method actor, you would do courses in methodical acting. Mm. It's not just something you throw the word around, mm. you know. There's a difference between method acting and uh, immersing yourself in a role, mm. which is maybe what I do, the second part, <laughs> you know. So uh, for Lafa Manjola, she's a performer in the, in the script. I'm not a performer, I'm not a singer. So I had to do a lot of research. I researched a lot of, um, you know, the performers in the 60s, the 50s, and even present day. Um, and coming down to Africa, I had a particular case study, the late Brenda Farsi. Mm, I love her. Yes. Uh, and why did I choose Brenda Farsi? That's because there were similarities between her and Angela. Yes. You know, so I felt like I could understudy her. So um, I did that research. Hers was also a really tragic story. It was, yes, it was if a tragic look at story. The way she also yeah. died, yes. the use of drugs yes. and the yes. circles yes. she moved in. And then when you watch her perform, you could tell that she was disturbed. Mm. So mm. there were just similarities, slight but similarities between her and Angela. And um, then um, for Angela, the director, Mildred Okwo, um, she helped me create a backstory. Now, what's a backstory? A backstory for a character is not necessarily in the script. You're just um, um, discovering who this person is. So you create a backstory of this person, who she is, where she's coming from, what forms her decisions, why does she act the way she acts. That, in total, helps you... Um, it helps me... It helps you make a good interpretation of your role. So let me understand yeah. it. Because in real life, mm -hmm. real people have context, have backgrounds. A absolutely. So what you then try and do, that's a very clever way yes. of doing it, actually. Yes. I haven't heard of this before. Are you, Is you yeah, no, yeah, so you create a whole story that doesn't necessarily make it onto the script, script or yes. to the screen yes. but which helps you when Understand. you're sort of acting mm -hmm. to sort of think okay this is where I'm coming from this is my absolutely. background absolutely really? absolutely yes that so basically because what we're doing is you're you're giving life to that character mm -hmm. you know and for you to really understand it you have to understand this person this whole being what why is she like this? Why does she raise her hand this way? Mm. Why does she tilt her head this way? You know, mm. so you have to create like who is she, uh, background, where she was born, parents, sort of childhood she may have had, you know, things like that. Mm. So that's what um, we had to create. Yeah, you, you talked about watching Brenda Fassi and sort yes. of trying to immerse yourself in the world of music. Yes. And in that movie, um, we see you singing. Did you actually sing in real <laughs> life or was it all <laughs> mimed? Um, uh, uh, <laughs> Until you watch it. <laughs> <laughs> no, people, I, I mean, I've seen the clip of you singing. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I'm just a little bit curious because, you know, some people would sort of go and take vocal lessons and actually mm. try to do yeah. the, 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 the delivery, singing. the singing themselves. Yeah. I'm just wondering what yeah. happened with you. Um, oh, you don't want to I say. I don't want to say now. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> many people have still not seen the film. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, you looked fabulous. Another Thank thing you. that stood out was the costumes, you mm. know. Um, it looked like a lot of attention mm -hmm. um, was paid to sort of detailing that period yes. so that you could convey in the clothes mm -hmm. and in the settings. Mm -hmm. um, who did you work with for th for your look? Okay, so um, Yolanda Okereke, mm -hmm. um, she's, uh, the w she's a wardrobe head for La Femme Angela. She's worked on other projects as well. She was... Uh, uh, wardrobe, I think. No, were, we had two wardrobe heads for the meeting, so um, she was wardrobe head for La Femme Angela. Um, I think she, when she first got the script, apparently, because I remember Mildred, my business partner, told me that for some reason, for a long time, um, Yolanda Okereke was not coming forth, you understand, with images mm -hmm. and all. So one day she asked her, and Yolanda said that it's not coming to her. That is not coming to her. The images um, she sees Angela, Dejare, all the characters in the film, that's not coming to her. Then, a year before we now went to film, or some months before we went to film, she called and said it had just come to her. Mm. And she went on to do her storyboard or her sketches because we had illustrations. Were you a little them. bit worried when she said it wasn't coming to her? Did you start to think, um, no. are we working with the right person? No, I, it, it happens. Or did you understand the creative yes, process? Yes, yes, right. I, okay. I did understand because she's worked on other major projects as well. She okay. worked on the meeting, mm. you know, so we knew that it would come. 
and the idea is to give them um the license to create it i mean I, we're not going to tell her this is how we want this person to look this is no we want you to read it and tell us what you think how you think this person should look in this particular scene and all and she did that and then you know and we felt okay yeah this actually works you mm -hmm. know that was it. In many ways, it is a timely film because um, um, it does deal with some really disturbing subject matters around exploitation, uh, women being taken advantage of. Um, I, I mean, how much of that was at the forefront of your mind when you were putting it together? And I particularly refer, there's a particular scene mm -hmm. which many think is a rape scene but somehow has not been sort of presented that way. And I, I'm wondering whether the, that was quite deliberate because of the nature of um, what you were looking at or whether this is an oversight. What, what, what was going through your mind as co-producer and actor when that scene was unfolding? Um, well, it, it's, it's just how the story was told. You know, um, because I'm trying not to say much about the film because we'll yes, we it's just the way the story was told, told right. that needed to happen because of the scene that happened before that. Right. You know, and really, in a way, that is what happens in relationships. Mm. You know, some men take advantage of their wives, of their girlfriends, and they don't even think that it's rape right, or something like that. Right. But it is what it is so it is you it's know? in presenting yeah. it and not making it an overtly you mm. were speaking to what goes on in the everyday yes is what you're saying yes Fine. Okay. yes okay. yes basically okay. but at the same time we didn't want to like focus on that because mm. that would be taking this it'll be taking it would take it, taking the story away from you see what i mean yes. so the idea was not to focus on that particular scene for so long mm. you know but just show a bit of what happens in relationships sometimes that we just you know overlook mm. you know and just uh, tell the story okay so well. so nollywood is doing really well and the nigerian music industry is doing very well and we don't see the sort of synergy that we sometimes see in other parts of the world between music producers and Nollywood. I mean, when we talk to music producers, some of them say the kind of remuneration they get mm. working in Hollywood isn't that great. But in this movie, we see that, you know, there was a lot of music because mm. there was a, a part of the story that was rooted mm. in music. What do you think can be done to sort of encourage greater collaboration especially with maybe our big mm. superstars in mm. the music sector with mm. Nollywood? Mm. Um, I think for every artist, will any artist who understands what art is will want to be involved in any other good work of art. Mm. So for me, I feel like if you do um, a really good story, like for instance, if a musician were to say to me, oh, Rita, I'd like to star or be in my music video, I want to know what the song is about. I want to know what it talks about. I want to know how it's going to be shot. And if it ticks all the bo all the boxes or whatever, I will be a part of it. I've done that before. Yeah, okay. I, I've been in a music video for, what's his name? D Dari. Dari, Dari okay. Atalade, Dari, you know. Yes. And I enjoyed the process, you know. Mm -hmm. So I believe that every artist will want to collab with another artist as long as they believe in whatever it is you're telling, whatever story you're telling, whatever music you're singing, you know. So, um... For La Femme Angela, I, I think that um, some of the songs that were used were necessary and some of the singers that we worked with liked the idea of the story mm -hmm. and wanted to be part of it. And it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't free. <laughs> we, we, we paid <laughs> yeah, them, you know. Money. Yeah. Which, which brings me back to the earlier conversation you touched upon, the issue of investors. funding mm -hmm. and investors. Um, um, in many ways, because of the big abuse we see of copyright mm -hmm. um, within the Nigerian um, movie space, yeah. but also, you know, the music industry, um, movie makers here don't necessarily make money the traditional way other people make. So, I mean, w what is the situation today as far as the industry is concerned when it comes to sort of raising money to do movies, so the back end of it, but also sort of um, raising enough to be able to attract big stars like yourself to to do a movie how does it work um you know nollywood is growing you know it's still growing and the truth is some years ago it was difficult to convince investors to part with their money 
And I can't blame them because you see, at the end of the day, as a business person, you want to be assured that you'll make your money back. Now, there was there's really no structure for that. However, things have changed with, you know, like platforms um, such as uh, cable platforms, uh, uh, streaming platforms, you know, cinemas, you know, that has changed, you know. So I, and more and more investors are now being convinced, you know, to part with their money. They've seen some films go on to do um, great numbers in the cinemas, you know, and uh, I think that's convincing enough mm. um, to do that. Um, in terms of back-end deals, I think a few actors or filmmakers are beginning to see the need to sign that in contract that I will get certain percentage of, you know, the gross earnings mm -hmm. and all. It's still, it's still very young, you know, but I, I've seen, because I, I think I've done that before in a film, mm -hmm. for a film, mm -hmm. you know, so it's uh, gradually, and, gradually and, will be yeah. at par with the West. <laughs> and what, was that the biggest challenge in putting together this movie, raising money, or were there other things? And what was the most fun thing about putting it together as well? Um, Hmm. the greatest challenge was really finding the right budget. Right. If you watch the film, you'll understand what I mean, that you needed to shoot it the way it needed to be shot. You know, so finding the budget. I mean, we kept it and waited for four years before we shot it. So, in fact, it's taken us six years to shoot that film, to do pre-production, production proper, and then post-production, and then release it to the public. You know, and obviously, creating at the level we wanted to create it, you know, takes a lot of time and a lot of attention to detail, um, casting, um, acting, uh, production, uh, what you call it, designing and all. Um, some, of the, some of the spaces that we used in the film were actually built. Mm, yes. Specifically for yes, the film. Yes, for right? the film. We built... This is really the, good to hear. Yeah, Nollywood yeah. is getting to... <laughs> yes, we built... Yeah, where, okay, yeah, we okay. built some, some, uh, some of the location sets, sets that, yes, mm. we, they were built. And um, now, the fun thing for me, it's not fun when you're doing it. It's fun when you now see it. After it's been... <laughs> After it's been edited or when it starts being edited and you're watching like, oh, wow. How much uh, contribution do you make to the editing process or does Mildred sort of kick you out of the editing okay. room and so say, that's get the out? Yes. No, no, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I know the job of a director. Yes. The, is the director is in charge when it comes to, you know, the creating, everything. Obviously, she can um, seek advice and hear your ideas here and there, you know, but I totally know when to let her do her job and editing the production creating uh, she even edited the story so you see in the credits a story edited by Mildred or mm -hmm. even though it was written by Tunde Babalola you know so for editing I don't go into she edits you know she she edits it because okay we had an an on-set editor who did the first cut and then we went to, we did further editing in a studio in Paris mm. you know so you see in the credits there are two editors and all the studio hands and everything you know is, is that because you had, you couldn't trust the quality of editing here or why did you have to go all the way to Paris <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why we went all the way to Paris <laughs> maybe you had a big budget yeah, and um, it, I needed to be spent uh, not, <laughs> not really because we still had to find more budget it's to even finish budget, up the film right. you know um I, I'm, really, I'm asking really here a serious mm. question about, mm. you know, the sort of skill sets mm. that exist within um, Nollywood and whether yeah. you feel we still have gaps that need to be filled. Um, I will say we need more work done in editing. Mm. You know, I, I think that editing is more than cut, join, mm. cut, join. Mm. It's, mm. Your, it's a skill. You're telling a story. You can do a very good story, and if it g gets into the hands of a the bad wrong. editor or a wrong editor, your film is lost. The mm -hmm. story is lost. So it's very important. Editing is where, let's say, maybe seventy-five percent of the of the job is done. Yeah, on the film. So it's important that we. Mm -hmm. um, you have another project, I understand, something called the Therapist that's coming out this month. And given yeah. that we are coming of you know a very difficult covid year how are you managing to sort of remain so productive at a time when many people said 
the sector, particularly the part of it that includes, you know, sort of recording, shooting mm-hmm. because of putting mm-hmm. people together mm-hmm. had suffered. Yes. That's the thing. You know, when the COVID, um, I think when they lifted the the lockdown, I got the script from the, speech, from the producers of the film and I read it. I liked it, you know. However, I was concerned about, you know, COVID and all that what they planned to do, you know, to adhere to the rules and regulations and all. And they told me they were testing everyone. I insisted, you know, they test all the cast members and they did all that. They had sanitizers on set. Now, when you're shooting the actors... So what, they test you and then when you come to set, you can't go out again? Yes, so they were camped. Yes, so we were camped, yeah. Yeah. Especially the actors were camped. Okay. You know, now the crew members too were camped. However, when you're on set shooting, you know, the actors can't wear masks. Mm. But we made sure all the crew members wore masks. And then when I finished shooting, I insisted on getting tested before going home Mm. because I have people at home and I don't want to risk, put their lives at risk. You know, so yeah, we did that. And um, however, what surprised me is that the film is coming out the same time (laughs) that La Femme Angela is coming out, you know. And so uh, there was no conversation with you about the um, release of the film and the timing of it? um, I think, you know, mostly to talk to my manager, you know. And I think it wasn't their fault, actually. It wasn't their fault. I think sometimes to secure dates, there's always one thing or the other. So you have to wait. So it wasn't... Is that going to be a problem for you, though, promoting both? two movies around the same time? Will you get exhausted? Uh, well, Will you confuse <laughs> your fans? I, you? I hope I don't. <laughs> <laughs> They're two very different characters, two different films. The stories mm-hmm. are completely different. And in terms of being exhausted or whatever, I've been doing this for 23 years. So... Um, how how have things changed oh, from greatly. when you started to greatly, now? Greatly. We didn't have cinemas for one. <laughs> Secondly, we didn't have phones. <laughs> you had to rely on taking transports to Suruleri yeah. to check if you made it, um, if you passed an audition, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, we didn't have cable. We didn't have uh, cinema, which online platforms, mm-hmm. streaming mm-hmm. platforms. We didn't have all that, <gasps> you know. So, Nollywood has grown in leaps and bounds. But, and but yeah. Beyond that, uh, the people you probably started out with that are not in the industry as we speak. So there's a degree of longevity that we've seen in your career. It's mm. um, quite amazing, actually. Thank you know, you. Um, what do you think has been the reason for that ability to sort of be there at the beginning and still be here among, you know, the top superstars of Nollywood? Um, Grace powers that be <laughs> and, and just basically I don't rest on my laurels I don't say to myself I know everything so I'm going to stop working mm-hmm. I see the need to constantly learn to constantly you know just do better mm-hmm. you know acquire more skills like during the lockdown I, I used the Helen Mirren acting master class as a refresher course so I do that, like I read up stuff, you know, because I don't, I, I'm very... Self-improvement. Open. Yes, I'm very, I'm very big on self-improvement and I'm very big on having an open mind, on learning from anybody. You can l- acquire knowledge from anyone because you never know the role you're going to play tomorrow. Mm. What, the, what if I'm told to play a role of a woman who sells in Balogo? You understand? Or yes. something, or who sells all this um, um, second-hand used clothing, things mm. like that, you know. So I'm very open, you know, um, in that regard so I, I think that is why because I keep just acquiring knowledge learning to do you know acquiring skills and just uh, and, and for just, young ones starting mm. out in the industry now if you sort of had any piece of advice what would it be I would say concentrate on on your art mm. and um I know you want to be a star, especially the times we live in now. We have social media, Mm. you know, it's easy to get carried away with all those things, you know. However, I'll say concentrate on why you're doing what you're doing in the first place, you know. Um, Concentrate on working as an actor, on your craft, improving yourself. And And stardom will follow. That's it, stardom will come. Mm. Stardom will come, yeah. I'm about to get a bit personal as we wrap up this (laughs) interview. Um... You're not someone whose sort of love life is normally out on display. In the 23 years you've been in Nollywood, we've had very little about your personal relationship. But then in the last few months, Mm. pictures have made their way um, 
to the public, you know, showing yourself with your new view, Fidelis Anusike, publisher of Daily Times, my very good friend, by the way, <laughs> and everything. So um, what's going on there? Is it serious? Are wedding bells ringing? You said he's your very good friend. <laughs> no, but this <laughs> so is... So you should know. No, <laughs> I can't answer that for the public. This has to be no, you. No, I and even if I speak, I I'll be speaking that? based mm -hmm. on what he told me. He's not, you know, the person that is supposed to... You're the one with fans. You're the ones whose fans yeah. want to know what's happening with you. All I'll say is... I'm good in that regard. Let's just. You're happy. I, I'm not. I, I'm very happy. But let's just uh, <laughs> not talk about that, please. Well, thank you so much, uh, Rita Dominic, <laughs> for coming you. into radio now and talking to us. Thanks, and, um, The movie to remind people is out in the cinemas. Yes. Um, all the cinemas. All the cinemas nationwide. nationwide. Most of the cinemas nationwide mm -hmm. is yeah. La Famangela is showing. Um, I think that you like this. You will enjoy watching this piece of art that we've created. Go with your friends. Go alone. Whatever. But just shall watch it. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you so much, Rita Dominic, for coming on the Jollof Agenda. Thanks for having me. 95.3. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kadaria. Thank you. Thank you.